Welcome to day eight of our January challenge 2021, um, working on Ada's piece. We're going to start today at bar 25, but I will play first from 21 where we learned yesterday through into today so that you can hear the connection. And then we'll focus in on bar 25. So this is me starting at 21 with our counting. Three and four and. So if you followed that as I played, you may have noticed in our new bars today that we have a couple of more of those double note and quite um, fast for the piece, you know, because they're on quavers or eighth notes. So these double notes, and I am going to suggest that we swap fingers again on those. So first of all, quick glance at our left hand, more of that same pattern, wonderful. We can really relax with it, we can really allow the melody to come through above it. Um, so it's answered then in the right hand, E, B, D, and I'm doing that four, two, and one. And that enables me to open my hand out and place them all as one very graceful, one very calm movement, okay? Four and two rather than three and two because that's very awkward reach between those two fingers. So four and two, it's not quite the octave because that's an E, whereas the thumb's a D, um, but that's that's very comfortable feeling for me. Notice that my finger three that's not on any string is not doing anything odd, it even hurts me to do it. Um, it might do something odd if I were placing like this, then you'd find that your hand might be like that. So if you've got any sticky outness in these other fingers, have a look at whether your fingers are maybe a little bit high, whether they can just slide down and oh, I just feel everything relax as I allow them to come down there. Okay, we get rid of that claw like. So four, two, one, there we go. Um, that's all very nice. Then we have this double A and it's a high A. So I've got to get up there. So you could think, oh, well, I've been here. I'll just reach up with my thumb. However, the following notes are also up there. And if we just reach up with our thumb, we may well find ourselves reaching backwards, especially if you're someone that leans on the harp on the side there, um, you could sort of just end up reaching backwards and we're not really in a good place to play um, richly and beautifully. And as we get higher up the harp, it can sound so much more um, harsh if we're not gentle with it or not careful with it. So actually what I'm going to ask you to do to try is to actually go all the way up with finger two to this first quaver A, which will have the act of moving your whole hand up there because you can't just reach backwards with a finger two like you could with your thumb. So we have that finger two and then I'm opening up with my thumb on the A and finger two on that black F there. So two, one, and then I'm moving my thumb to the G making sure that I bend it over beautifully. And again, because I've not reached back for it, my hand is there ready to receive my beautiful bent over thumb. So I have that ability to make it sound rich. Okay, so let's just try that. Go back, just the right hand, back to bar 25, the beginning of the line for today. And we have one and two and three and Ready up, one and. Okay, so we're using that crotchet rest to give us that time to get up to that high A. Okay, the third bar is back like the first bar. So we're back down. So we allow our whole hand to come down, open out in one movement, four, two, one. We're staying in that area. Oh, we've got another double A quaver coming up. So you could go one, two, two, one, two, 
it works, you sort of come off, go back on, but you're playing that double A with the same finger. I think the A and the B do want to be a two and a one. That makes sense. So if we're going to swap finger, let's maybe do one, three. So C to A could be one, three, which is then very comfortably getting out of the way as finger two comes out to repeat the A with our thumb on the B. And then you either move the two or again, let finger three come back out onto the G. So if we do that in time, so I have one and three, one, three, two, one, three is my suggestion. So if I give you a count in, you try it with me. One and three ready, nice released shoulders. One and. Okay, it's one of those things that the more released you are, I hesitate slightly to say relaxed because I'm very conscious that in um, Alexander Technique, they don't say relax your shoulders, they say release your shoulders. So the more released you feel, the less tense you are with all your hand shapes, the easier, one, three, two, one, three, the easier that will be to do. The more tense you are, that won't feel like a natural thing to do. So if it doesn't feel natural, ask yourself, where am I holding tension? And can I release it? It might be releasing your shoulders. It might be unclenching your jaw. It might be releasing the tongue from the top of your mouth and allowing that to drop. Um, it could be all those things. Um, and certainly about not being grr in your hand. Okay, let's put that all together from bar 25. So threes and ones in my left hand, the same pattern as before. Right hand is going to go four, two, and one. Okay, here we go. Three and four and. Ready up. Down we go. With this new fingering. done. Join me on the play along video. We'll do it a tiny bit slower again in that one. About that speed, a faster speed, lots of different ways to try it. All right. Um, and I will see you tomorrow otherwise. Okay. Take care. Well done.